There are many things preached in church today. There have been seminars, prayer hours, and sermons about blessings, prosperity, deliverance, wealth, and some other good and wonderful things that we all want in this life. It is good to preach these things, and they are all wonderful things. But it seems like something is missing in churches today. There are some topics that are avoided by pulpits today. You rarely hear sermons in church that speak on demons and demonology. The fact is that demons are real. They have been real for ages and they remain real. We must know that these demons want us to believe they don't exist, or they are just myths so that they can continue to work against Christians. It is incredibly sad that even though Christians have read it in the Bible many times where Jesus was casting out demons from people's lives, they still don't believe they are real. If you honestly believe Jesus is your Lord, if you honestly believe Jesus is your Savior, if you believe that records of the gospel are accurate, how then can you believe the demons are not real? There is a very real devil and a very real army of demons. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. The methods of these demons must be understood so that we will be able to deal with them. Before we go into explaining the characteristics of these demons, we need to know some facts about them. Demonology is a study of demons. It is not an act of worshipping demons. Churches avoid this a lot. We need to start telling people about these spirits and how to deal with them. Jesus taught his disciples about demons. In Matthew chapter 12, verses 43 through 45, Jesus didn't dance around this subject. Neither should we dance around this subject. David Pawson once said a profound statement. He stated, I believe when you come to know the Lord, you come to know the devil at the same time. And if someone says I don't have any experience of the devil, I have never come across the devil, I honestly wonder how far they have gone with the Lord, because as I said two weeks ago, the devil is not in hell tonight. He is in one of the heavens, and we wrestle against the power of evil not in the hellish places, but in the heavenly places. That is where they are. What a profound statement. The truth is that demons know about you. Don't let people tell you that demons don't know you, that only God does. You can be sure that these demons, at first sight, know about you and know who you are. They know if you are powerful or not. They know almost everything about you except what you are thinking. I have heard many people say demons or Satan himself knows what you are thinking in your mind. That is not possible. They don't have this power. But I believe that because they have dealt with humans for so long, they can guess what you are thinking based on your behavior and demeanor. Nowhere in scripture does it say demons know what you think. Although the Bible tells us they can suggest thoughts into our minds. Just like the psychologist can't know what you are thinking, but can guess through what you say or what you do is the way the devil behaves. The devil is not omniscient and demons are not omniscient. Only God is, but the demons know about you. If you are a child of God and you don't believe this, that there is a realm that we cannot see, and that demons are in this realm, it will be hard for you to battle these demons because you need to know what you are fighting. In 2012, a mother and her three children, and her mother, who was the grandmother of the children, moved to a home in Gary, Indiana. The home was demon-possessed, and when they moved in, the family's ordeal began when swarms of flies started appearing in the porch and quickly escalated from mysterious thumps coming from the basement and muddy footprints appearing on the carpet to incidents of levitation. After midnight, 
Campbell and Ammons both said they occasionally heard the steady clump of footsteps climbing the basement stairs and the creak of the door opening between the basement and kitchen. No one was there. Even after they locked the door, the noise continued. Campbell said she woke one night and saw a shadowy figure of a man pacing her living room. She leaped out of bed to investigate and found large wet boot prints. All kinds of supernatural things were happening in that home. Two of the most shocking physical manifestations happened and were witnessed by medics and law enforcement officials. One of which happened during a visit to the family doctor. On April 19, 2012, the family visited a hospital and were in the presence of nurses and doctors. They all stated they saw things they had never seen before whilst in that hospital room. Chaos erupted, and of the family members was possessed by it, it being a demon, and then that member of her family walked backwards towards the wall, then glided up that wall walking backwards up the wall to above her head and then flipped over her and stood there. And all the while demonic voices were being hurled at the people. This was witnessed by nurses, social workers and paramedics, all of whom recorded it in official reports. This happened in an emergency room and was witnessed by nurses, social workers and paramedics, all of whom recorded it in official reports, some of whom even ran out of the room. The official records constitute over 800 pages of what happened that day. Pastor Lawson said a profound statement telling this event in one of his sermons about demonology. He stated, after hearing this story, you've got to ask yourself, did that really happen? You have got to ask yourself the question, did that really happen? If it did happen, and it did happen, there is absolutely no logical scientific explanation to why it happened. I mean, walking up a wall backwards, I believe it, deal with it, I don't deny it. I don't have to deny it. I am a Bible believer. It doesn't surprise me one bit today that Satan can make a physical manifestation today that defies what the human body is capable of. It defies all explanation. To walk backwards up wall and flip over in front of someone is against all the laws of physics, against all the laws of nature. Albert Einstein would have a problem with this. He was a professor of physics. But if Einstein had witnessed someone walk backward up a wall, he would have to go back into his study and he would have to go open up some books and he would have to do some reading because everything he had learned up until that point would be challenged by what he saw. And the remarkable thing about it is when you get into this stuff and you begin to see this power come against you and it blows your mind and gives you goosebumps all over your body and the hair on the back of your neck begins to stand up. You don't turn to doctors, you don't turn to science, you turn to Jesus because that is the only thing that will make them leave. Jesus was passing a place when a man possessed by demons shouted, Mark 5 verse 7, and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou tormentest me not. This possessed man was not the one talking but the demons inside of him. They easily identified Jesus. They knew who he was. There is no way that the demons will not know who you are. And that is why you need to be a powerful Christian 
In another part a girl met Paul. She was possessed with a spirit that is not from God. She kept telling people who Paul and the other believers are. Acts 16 verse 17 The same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which shew unto us the way of salvation. This is just to make you know that these demons know you. We see in Acts 19 verse 15, an evil spirit saying to the seven sons of one Sceva, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? They know those who are truly born again, and are even after them. If you have seen people talking about spirits, like the familiar spirits helping them to get things done, or making them possess the kind of powers that no one can get, and you think these demons are friendly, they are not friendly. There is nothing friendly about demons. Ephesians 6 verse 12 For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. A lot of things around us happen. We as children of God should know not to fight human beings. We should know not to fight people. We should start resisting the devil and his demons. He is the one you should resist. He is the one to fight. He is the one we should defeat. Demons don't just manifest in terms of what happened with that young boy, but they're also very subtle and crafty. You know what? A lot of marriages that end in divorce isn't because the people are bad spouses or bad people. The problem is not them. There is something that doesn't like marriage. The devil hates the constitution marriage between a husband and wife. He hates it, and he will do everything in his power to break it up. Your challenge may not be your spouse. Your challenge may be the thing spoken of in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Don't argue and fight your spouse. Join forces and identify whether there is something that is trying to wedge between your marriage. You two are still the same people that fell in love with one another years ago. And if you can't join forces and your partner doesn't see what's trying to break you up, go into your closet and pray against it and fight for your marriage. Do you know that there's a spirit of lying? There are people who can't tell the truth to save their lives. All they do is tell lie after lie after lie. They can't tell truth because that spirit of lying won't let them. There is even a spirit of lust that pulls and urges people to fulfill their lustful desires. So why are they after us? Why are demons after humans? The answer is simple. We are made in God's image. God's love for me and for you is something that we could preach about for 10,000 lifetimes and we would never get to the end of it. And they know this. Their issue is not with you. They couldn't care less about you. There is an issue with Almighty God, and seeing as they cannot do anything to God, they go after us, the object of God's affection. God loves you more than he loves this world. Even with how beautiful this world is, with all its beauty and all its natural beauty, yet God loves you more than this world. God loves you more than he loves the stars in the sky, even though they shine bright and they decorate the universe. Yet God loves you more than them. Humanity is the apex of all of God's love. Or should I say you? Yes, you are the apex of God's love. The apex of God's majesty. So demons can hurt God through hurting you. God doesn't like seeing his children oppressed and bound by demons. God doesn't want to see his child pushed around and beaten around by spirits. But you know what the wonderful thing is? The wonderful thing is, we don't have to take it. We don't have to be pushed around. We don't have to live in fear. We have been given authority to drive him out of life, to drive him out of our homes, to drive him out of finances. And the devil knows that. But do you?